Hello anglers. Today is June 1st and it's really the first day that my favorite summer panfish pattern has finally fired up. And that pattern is fishing offshore wood for crappies. Now depending on where you live, that phrase offshore wood may mean a number of different things. Here's a nice one. Yep. So for example, if you live on a natural lake, then offshore wood may simply be a big tree that was washed in off the shoreline and got pushed out into deep water by wind or waves or current or ice if you live up north, okay? There's a nice offshore wood crappie. If your favorite body of water is a reservoir, then offshore wood may be standing timber that was in place before the reservoir was filled, or stumps that were associated with timber that was present before the reservoir was filled. If the place where you fish is relatively devoid of natural cover, then offshore wood may take the form of artificial fish attractors like fish cribs or things like that. Ooh, there's one. So whether it's full trees or brush piles or stumps or fish cribs or, or really anything like that, if that woody cover is sitting in relatively deep water and deep is going to mean different things to different people but when I think about deep water I think about 12 feet or more. If you've got wood out in say 12 to 20 feet of water and it's the summertime that wood is going to hold crappies. Well on today's episode of On the Water with the Technological Angler I'm going to teach you exactly how to leverage your onboard electronics, especially Humminbird Mega Side Imaging and Humminbird Mega Live Imaging to tap into this incredibly productive pattern. And I'll guarantee you this, no matter where you live, from Ontario to Texas, from Maine to California, if your favorite lake has crappies in it, you're gonna be able to tap into this pattern and catch more and bigger crappies all summer long. Let's get started. As you pull away from the dock, Humminbird's mega side imaging is going to be your most important tool for identifying this offshore wood cover that we're going to be targeting, as well as for determining if there are fish holding nearby. Now my first recommendation at this stage of the game is to collect your side imaging data in search mode. Now search mode means covering as much water as possible as quickly as possible so that we can rapidly identify the cover and the fish that we're most interested in. Now on my side imaging view, I'm gonna open up my side imaging range, say up to 125 feet on both sides of the boat. I'm also going to increase my side imaging sensitivity and decrease my side imaging contrast. That's going to allow me to see objects all the way out to the far end of that side imaging range. Now while I'm in search mode, I'm going to collect that side imaging data at my boat's idle speed or maybe even a touch higher so I can cover as much water as possible as quickly as possible. While I'm in search mode, I'm trading volume of information for detail. Right now, I'm simply trying to identify distinct pieces of offshore wood cover. I'm going to drop a waypoint on each of those interesting pieces of cover and then cycle back with side imaging to take a second look for more detail. Now my second look with side imaging is specifically to look for fish. 
Now remember, fish inside imaging are the smallest details we'll see on the display. So I'm going to reconfigure my side imaging view to maximize the amount of detail. So on my side imaging view, I'm going to reduce my side imaging range, say to around 75 feet. I'm also going to reduce my side imaging sensitivity and increase my side imaging contrast. Now as I collect my side imaging data, I'm going to do so at my boat's idle speed and preferably even slower. Now with these side imaging settings, if there are fish holding on that woody cover, I'm going to be able to see them. Remember, we're looking for bright white primary sonar returns and dark sonar shadows. Now once we've identified a piece of cover that's holding fish, it's time to position the boat. Now when I'm targeting these offshore summer crappies, I like to do so from a fixed position. And in reality, depending on the water depth, I have two options for positioning the boat. Now if your offshore woody cover is in relatively shallow water, and I'm talking about 10 to 12 feet or less, then a Minn Kota shallow water anchor system like a raptor or a talon like I have, is a good option for providing that fixed boat position. Now a significant advantage of a shallow water anchor system like a raptor or a talon is that once the spike is deployed, the whole operation is silent. There won't be any trolling motor noise that might alert fish to your presence. Now whenever I'm fishing in deeper water, or when I'm fishing under conditions when noise really isn't an issue, like on a real windy day, then I'm going to provide that fixed boat position using the spot lock feature of my Minn Kota Altera's iPilot Link system. Now both spot lock and the shallow water anchor provide reliable fixed boat positioning. At the same time, both spot lock and the shallow water anchor also provide me with flexibility in terms of where I position my boat. With my talon, it's easy for me to pull up the spike, reposition the boat by a boat length or two, and change my casting angle to that offshore woody cover. Of course, I can do the same thing with Spotlock, but on my iPilot Link system, I also have another tool that allows me to easily reposition the boat, and that's called the Jog feature. With Jog, I can reposition the boat in very precise five foot increments, functionally moving my spot lock to any location around that piece of offshore woody cover. Remember, the whole concept here is that once we've identified that piece of woody cover and we know with confidence that there are fish there, we wanna saturate that woody cover with casts and force those fish to bite. We can do so best from a fixed boat position, a boat position that can be flexible enough to move around the entire piece of structure.
Well, I've found my offshore woody cover here. I've got a fallen tree that's laying in about 10, 11 feet of water. Had some nice fish returns on it as I drove past it with side imaging. So I've positioned the boat. Here I'm using the spot lock tool on my Altera to, uh, to hold my boat kind of upwind of this, uh, of this tree. I have a nice gentle breeze today. And so that nice gentle breeze is something that the spot lock tool can work very well with to hold the boat in place. And as I begin fishing, it's also time to pivot away from side imaging as my fish finding tool to mega live imaging as my primary fish finding tool. Now there are some real important differences between side imaging and live imaging that it's important to understand so you're using each of those tools in the appropriate way. First of all, side imaging of course provides us with a static view, a view of the structure that doesn't change, and it also provides us with a historical view, right? That's where the structure was, what the structure looked like, where the fish were that one time when we drove past it and imaged it with our side imaging beam. Now in contrast, mega live imaging is a dynamic tool. The image is always changing as the beam is on. And not only is it dynamic, but it's current, right? The, the view we get with mega live imaging is what's happening right now in real time with regard to the structure and the location of the fish. Now, two unfortunate realities that we face every time we're on the water are that the boat moves and the fish move, right? Even when we're fishing from a fixed position using spot lock or a shallow water anchor, the boat still moves around a little bit, right? It wiggles and wobbles in the wind as spot lock works to keep that boat in its GPS defined fixed position. Well, not only does the boat move, but the fish move, right? They have this nasty habit of swimming around just because they were localized on one piece of structure when you drove past it with side imaging, doesn't mean those fish are gonna be sitting in exactly the same place when it's time to start casting to them. And that's why it's important to use a dynamic real-time sonar tool like Humminbird Mega Live Imaging when it's time to get the boat set up and actually start casting to the fish that are localized on that structure. Now, depending upon the depth of the water where you found that structure and fish and the particular fishing conditions that you're dealing with that day, you might be able to use any one of the three mega live imaging modes as a real time fishing tool. You wanna think about using forward mode as a tool for seeing what's in your casting lane, right? You'll be able to measure the distance to the structure. You'll be able to see the fish that are moving around within that relatively narrow mega live imaging beam. And if you place your bait with inside that beam, you'll be able to see your bait moving through the structure and the fish that are interacting with it. Now, if we're fishing in relatively shallow water, say 12 feet or less, something like that, then landscape mode for mega live is a great way to not only see what's in your casting lane, but to open up and see what's in your entire casting window. In landscape mode, of course, we flip that mega live transducer out on its side so that it projects the live imaging beam horizontally into the water rather than vertically. And as a result, the live image we get with landscape mode isn't just a tiny slice of the water column, but instead it's a giant wedge, 140 degree wide wedge that allows us to see the bottom, structure, and fish moving around again in real time. Now, if that woody cover that you're targeting is deep enough, you may be able to kind of park right on top of those fish and use the down viewing mode for mega live imaging as your real time fishing tool. That down viewing mode for mega live imaging is a fantastic way to keep track of the structure, the fish moving around in real time, and of course your jig. Even the smallest presentations show up very, very well in the down mode for mega live imaging at depths as much as 40 feet or even more. So while you're actively fishing, be sure to make use of one or more 
of those mega live imaging modes as your real-time fishing tool. Here's one. Now this pattern is 100% based on soft plastics and relatively light jigs. You know, most of the places that we fish this pattern, little guy, uh, a light jig means a 16th of an ounce. That's largely because we don't fish water that's a lot deeper than 20 feet very often. If you want to tap into a substantially deeper water wood crappie pattern this summer, you may need to upsize your jigs, but rarely have I needed to go heavier than one eighth of an ounce. Now, when you're picking that 1 16th ounce jig, you're going to be looking for something with a short shank hook and, a, and a, there's one, and a wire plastic keeper. Okay, that wire plastic keeper is going to help to keep the soft plastic pinned up against the head of the jig. And believe me, you're going to go through so many fish fishing this pattern that those soft plastics are just going to be absolutely tattered by the end of your trip. And having that wire plastic keeper uh, to keep that uh, soft, uh, soft bait, soft plastic pinned up against the head is just going to make your jigs last longer, get you more fish per bait. All right, now let's talk about rods. All right, I'm going to choose a rod primarily based on how long I think I'm going to have to cast. I got one sixteenth ounce jig with a tiny little crappie plastic on it is a pretty light package. If I have to cast that a long distance, I'm going to choose a seven foot rod. On the other hand, if my casts are primarily going to be shorter because I'm going to be positioning the boat closer, uh, closer to that wood, maybe even fishing vertically near that wood, then I'm going to choose a six foot four inch rod. Now an absolute workhorse of a panfish rod, one that you know, works well for a wide range of panfish presentations and is tough enough to last many, many seasons would be the seven foot light power, extra fast action St. Croix panfish series rod. There's one. Now the rod I'm using here is from the St. Croix avid panfish series. It's a six foot four inch rod that's light power and fast action. Uh, the Avid Panfish series has a few more of the premium St. Croix rod technologies built in compared to the Panfish series rods. Uh, they are extremely light in the hand, very well balanced. And the, my casting target, the offshore wood I'm throwing to is about 50 feet or so behind the boat and so this six foot four inch rod is perfectly suited for that distance. Here's one. Now I have both of these rods equipped with 1000 series spinning reels. These are Shimano Vanfords that I have on both of these rods right now. Uh, it's a very light, smooth, well-balanced spinning reel. It's a good choice for a lightweight presentation like this one. Now I spool those Vanfords up with 20 pound test Seaguar Smackdown in the flash green color, right? As if you've been watching 
regularly, you know that I'm a big time line watcher and that high vis color just makes it so easy to detect light strikes, even if they're not telegraphed up to your rod. Um, now, of course, we don't want a bright, brightly colored opaque line right next to the lure. And so I have the whole operation finished with about a two foot liter of fluorocarbon. This is Seaguar and Vizex and 15 pound test. Right, because we're fishing around wood, remember wood is very abrasive. And so if we, if we hook up and the fish runs into that big wood pile, right, it can rub the line against that abrasive wood and cause the line to fail and lose that fish. And the fluorocarbon gives us some measure of abrasion resistance. It's gonna resist getting all rubbed up by that wood. And if you happen to contact a, you know, a toothy predator inside of these wood piles, like a pike or a walleye or something like that, then that fluorocarbon also gives you a running chance of being able to land that fish as well. Well, no matter where you live, from Ontario to Texas, from Maine to California, now you're ready to spend the summer chasing crappies in offshore wood. One of my favorite ways to fish during the summer, and I'm guessing it's gonna become one of your favorites too. Hey, I'm Jason Helfen, the Technological Angler, and these crappies and I will see you on the water.